trading the Jeep Gladiator for the Wrangler 4XE Hybrid Electric. Should I? everybody and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. So should I be trading off my Jeep Gladiator for the Jeep Wrangler 4XE electric hybrid? I've been getting a lot of questions on the channel about that recently so I thought I'd take just a quick look at it and I gotta say I was a bit surprised, maybe horrified by what I found. Now, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm interpreting this information incorrectly, but I don't think so. So first of all, let's talk about what the Wrangler 4XE Electric Hybrid is. It is a 2.0 liter engine paired with an electric motor. The simplistic way to put it, I guess. It is a hybrid, so that means you can run on gas, you can run on electric. Once the electric gives up, you can run on just gas. So, what's the price of this thing, first of all? It starts at $51,225. Now, if you can find one for that, I'd be shocked because, of course, they're going to add stuff to it like they do every other vehicle, but $51,225. It is a plug-in hybrid turbocharged electric Jeep, the Jeep Wrangler. That's the only version you can get it in, the four-door Wrangler. So what are the specs? It has 375 horsepower, that's all in, 470 pound-feet of torque. Now, that's due to the electric motors, of course. They're always going to give you more oomph off the line, which I really do like. 470 pound-feet of torque in a Jeep Wrangler? That's pretty cool. What about the times? Zero to 60 in six seconds. Now, eh, I don't know. You know, my wife's Jeep Wrangler, it's a two-door, gets right about that anyway, maybe a little bit quicker, and it's the old gas-guzzling combustion engine. My Jeep Gladiator, it gets not too far from that itself, so I don't know that that number is really all that impressive. It is quicker than the Jeep Gladiator, almost said Wrangler, uh, but not by too much. What about fuel economy or electric economy, whatever you want to call it? It gets 49 miles per gallon with the electric motor assist or engaged, I suppose. So that would be utilizing the electric motor along with the combustion engine. It has a 370 mile range. Yeah, that's probably about the same, a little bit more than your normal gas engine in a, in a Jeep, I suppose. But let's talk about charging because that's always important when you're looking at some sort of an electric anything, right? First of all, let me say it does have regenerative brakes. So that means when you hit the brakes, it's going to charge the engine a little bit. I don't know how helpful that is unless you're in stop and go traffic or maybe you're riding the brake down the freeway. I don't know. I think that's kind of gimmicky myself. It does charge a bit, but if you're on a long distance trip, you're not going to be hitting the brakes, so it's going to be inconsequential whether or not it has regenerative brakes. What does it take to charge this thing? Well, there are two different options. There's a level one and a level two charger. The level one is a 120 volt charger like you would have at your house. And the level two is the hopped up 240 volt charger. That's going to be their quick charge, if you will, what you would find out in the world. So how long does it take if you hook up to one of these versus the other? Well, if you go with the 240 volt charger, which by the way, you can have installed at your house. I tried to get an estimate on that, but when you click that option on their site, you have to fill out all this information and of course then they're going to bug you, probably get back to you later, who knows? So I didn't even bother. But it takes two hours to charge with the 240 volt charger. Eh, I don't know. Again, you're on a long distance trip. Hopefully you're the first one uh, at the charging station because if not, you're going to be sitting in line while somebody else is charging for two hours. 
and then you get your two hours. It could be four or eight hours, who knows? I don't dig that. What about if you use the 120 volt charger? This would be probably what most people would have at home. 12 hours. 12 hours to plug this into just a normal socket. I assume it doesn't require any extra equipment. It might, but 12 hours. I mean, I, let's say you work until, I don't know, six o'clock at night, whatever, by the time, maybe seven, by the time you get home, eat dinner, change your clothes, all that stuff. Let's say it's seven o'clock at night. You remember, oh, I got to plug in my Jeep. So you plug it in and then you have to wait to get the full charge until at least seven o'clock the next morning. Yeah, it might be doable if you jump on it right away and you're very diligent about plugging that thing in. I don't know. I, I think that's way too long myself. I think you would probably have to have the 240 volt charger installed. And I'm guessing that's going to cost anywhere from three to six grand to have that thing installed at your house. Crazy. So how far does it go? How far does it go on the electric motor? Well, if you're running just electric, no gas, it's 21 miles. I don't think most people could even make it to work in 21 miles. So what do you do when you get there? If you plug it in, and I'm sure they don't have a, a, a high volt station, it's gonna be 12 hours. So there's no way you're gonna have enough charge after that, although they do say with just 1% charge, it'll give you 12, 21 miles. I don't know how that works. That's how I understood it. Maybe my interpretation of what they said is incorrect, but that's what it says. So what about charging stations? I found this very interesting. They gave an option to plug in your address or your zip code to see how many charging stations there were near you. Now, I'm in South Texas almost in Mexico. So let's just say we don't have the latest and greatest infrastructure here, right? We don't have all the most modern stuff. And it certainly applies in this case because we don't have any charging stations for the Jeep Wrangler 4XE. There are none near me. So I would have to solely depend on charging it at home and then getting back before it ran out to utilize just the electric part of the system. Now, a little caveat to this, keep in mind, it does have a gas powered motor as well, the 2.0 liter turbocharged. So it's not like you're gonna be stranded anywhere. I mean, you would be able to get back home or whatever with the gas powered engine. Depends on how much gas it holds though. Something I didn't see, I'm not sure how much it is, but it better hold enough that you can get pretty far without the electric because it's not gonna take you very far. So, to answer the question, oh, one more thing before I forget, there is a tax credit, $7,500 tax credit. Yeah. So, am I gonna get one? Would I buy one of these for $51,225? No, I'd buy a Tesla or something. I mean, if I really wanted to go electric, I'd get something that has more range. Heck, even a Prius has more range than this does. I think it's more of a gimmick for Jeep, I really do. 21 miles, I mean, come on, man. I could coast 21 miles in a mountain somewhere. Who knows? Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Does this sound like the Jeep for you? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have an additional channel. It is Rob Motive, all about my Dino 11 2021 Toyota Tacoma. Check it out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay electrified out there. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.